This review discusses the role of apalutamide darilutamide and enzalutamide in patients with non-metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer. Three trials investigated the role of these agents in this setting and have been published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Spartan Prosper and Aramis trials were phase 3 double-blinded randomized clinical trials, with a 2-to-1 scheme. The efficacy of apalutamide darilutamide and enzalutamide plus androgen deprivation therapy was compared with that of placebo plus ADT. The primary endpoint of all trials was metastasis-free survival. Whereas overall survival was a secondary endpoint. Patients were eligible if they had M0, N0 or N1 castration-resistant disease. Patients had PSA rising during ADT with PSA at least 2 ng per milliliter and PSA doubling time less or equal to 10 months. All trials met the primary endpoint, demonstrating a meaningful clinical benefit in terms of metastasis-free survival. These agents also improved overall survival showing a median gain of about one year. The safety and tolerability profile was good. Hypertension was the most common grade 3 to 4 adverse event. In addition, several sub-analyzes demonstrated that quality of life was not deteriorated by the use of these drugs, and many local symptoms improved. The hottest topic concerns the use of new imaging modalities such as choline or PSMA PET CT scan during the staging of these patients. Spartan Prosper and Aramis trials used conventional imaging including CT and bone scan or MRI to assess the eligibility of patients. It is known that the use of PET leads to the identification of metastases in the majority of patients who are not metastatic according to conventional imaging. However, it is not known what is the effect of managing as metastatic those patients who are metastatic by PET but not by conventional imaging. In fact, these patients were not separately included in any trial in either castration-sensitive or castration-resistant disease. The use of PSMA or choline PET can cause stage migration and Will Rogers phenomenon. Patients who are metastatic by PET but not by conventional imaging show an intermediate prognosis. Which is better than that of metastatic patients and worse than that of non-metastatic patients by conventional imaging. Staging by PET moves these patients with intermediate prognosis to the group of patients with metastatic disease and poor prognosis. The final result is an improvement in the prognosis of both non-metastatic and metastatic groups of patients by conventional imaging without changing the individual prognosis of patients. It is unknown whether modifying the therapeutic approach in these patients could lead to an improvement in their outcome. However this behavior could lead to the use of chemotherapy in patients who have never been included in the docetaxel trials. Similarly, Many patients could be classified as metastatic castration resistant and excluded from treatment with apalutamide, darilutamide or enzalutamide in a setting that was specifically designed for them. In our review, we proposed an algorithm in patients with NMCRPC. And we suggest that these patients should be managed based on results of conventional imaging irrespective of the result of PSMA or choline PET. In conclusion, Spartan Prosper and Aramis trials showed that the use of novel antiandrogens produces a median gain of about two years in terms of metastasis-free survival. And a median gain of about one year in terms of overall survival. These drugs show a good tolerability profile and ensure a good quality of life. It is important to be aware about the risk of stage migration and Will Rogers phenomenon by using PSMA and choline PET. Based on the methodology of pivotal trials, 
we suggest that conventional imaging should guide the use of systemic treatments in patients with NMCRPC.